UK military has seen plenty of action overseas. Many returning servicemen and women have horrific memories that come flooding back long after they return to Civvy Street, leaving them feeling isolated and fearful of the outside world. But with the right support, the countryside can become a sanctuary for them once more. Here in Scotland, one charity has been set up that aims to tackle the very specific needs of PTSD sufferers. Bravehound have discovered a way to help men and women out of the darkness they often describe. And their secret weapon is a four-legged friend. This is Judy, a golden retriever and the latest recruit to hound school. This pup will be taught the best ways to support her new veteran owner. Today, she's learning how to ensure that people can't get too close for comfort. Trainer Kate Livermore is teaching her how to block and cover. Cover! There we go. She's standing in front of me. So, in effect, she's looking after my sort of personal space, so you're not encroaching on me. So, it makes veterans, especially veterans with PTSD, they're very nervous. There is a dog right in front of them covering that space. Now, how long will it take? for Judy to be trained to the point where she can then go and start living with a veteran? If she's at the very sort of stage at 10 months old, yes. If not, we wait for about a year. You're knowing that she's, in effect, going to save a life, so it's worth it. Well, what a lifesaver you are. A very beautiful one. Judy, we wish you the best of luck in your career. Hopefully, Judy will go on to form a strong bond with her veteran. The charity have 15 dogs in training and a further 19 dogs have already been paired with their owners. One retired soldier who needed help is Paul Wilkie, a former Royal Engineer with 22 years service. He fought in Bosnia 25 years ago and the effect of that war and what he witnessed is still with him today. It was hell. It really was. Bullet holes, absolutely riddled in walls. Mines everywhere. I've seen things and done things that all of the young lads nowadays can only do on a PlayStation. I've done it for real. After a successful army career, it was only on returning to family life in Scotland that his problems began. Sadly, when I came out of the army, I ended up with post-traumatic stress disorder. It broke up my marriage. I turned to drink, hit the bottle, ended up living in a forest. Homeless and in the grip of crippling PTSD, he'd hit rock bottom. What triggered it? I was in an accident in 2012. A couple of days after the accident, uh, I started getting flashbacks and nightmares from 18 years previous in Bosnia. Your memories of a, a horrific event come back. I didn't know what to do. Uh, I didn't know who to turn to and I kept it, kept it secret. Paul was finding life so tough, he'd lost the will to live. You're at the lowest point in your life when you, what PTSD does to you. So I tried to kill myself twice. I didn't want to live. It was at this crunch point that Paul heard about the charity and wondered if having a dog could help him cope. The organization helps the most wounded warriors to recover from their trauma by giving them specially trained canine companions, like Paul's dog, Irma. They've really saved me, Bravehound, with Irma. My demons that, that come to me every night, Irma chases them away. How does she do that? Well, she senses that I'm having a nightmare, and I don't know how she does. I mean, she's an amazing dog, so she'll come onto my chest stand on my chest and let start licking my face. Wake you up. Yeah, wake me up. Everyday life for Paul is tough. He now avoids crowds like at football matches and goes to the supermarket at night. But with Irma by his side, he's finding it easier to get outdoors. You're hyper-vigilant and you... Irma notices it. If I'm walking down the street, you're, you're constantly on edge and you're... you're you're looking for snipers on roofs and uh, normal. Like if somebody comes up to talk to me, she will go in between us because she knows that I'm anxious. So she reacts mm. to what I'm reacting to. I'm living proof that, that, that you can beat it. You can beat the demons that come to you every night. Uh, 
I'll beat it with your dog called Oma. The sacrifice our troops make during their service can be a lifelong one. These transformative relationships between dog and veteran are made possible by this charity, founded by Fiona MacDonald. She drew her inspiration from a source that was very close to home. My father was in the Navy in the Second World War, and I was always aware of um, the problems that veterans had coming back and not being looked after properly. But for a small minority, they really struggle. They would become very isolated and lonely. And having a dog means you've got 24-hour companionship and support. Um, I always feel more confident when I've got my dog with me. Yeah. But that sense of companionship is absolutely crucial, isn't it? Yeah, and then seeing the difference when they actually get their dog. Uh, we had a veteran who, when he was partnered with that dog and drove off, he said that he actually stopped and was sobbing at the side of the road because he couldn't believe that he was actually getting this dog. Beyond mere companionship, evidence is now emerging that dogs, with their acute sense of smell, around 10,000 times sharper than our own, might actually be able to sense our hormone changes. Research is quite early stage, but it's seeing whether dogs can detect the cortisol and adrenaline, which comes before a nightmare. And so if the dogs can actually uh, disturb you before you're going into a full nightmare or a flashback, that's, that's going to make a huge difference to their lives. And I know with Paul, that Irma, she licks his face and wakes him up. And she wasn't trained to do that. She just does it. But your dogs also can remind their owners of when they may have to do certain things or take specific medication. Uh, yes, and one of our most recent uh, partnerships that's been really successful is Max uh, with Billy on a, a sound that's on uh, Billy's phone that goes on a specific time. Max will go and get his medication and, and bring it to him. So if he forgets, Max will do that for him. Thank you, boy. Thank you. Very good, my boy. And how much does it cost you? So we guarantee all of their uh, vet fees and uh, all the costs of having the dog. And we estimate it's about £1,000 a year. And one of the ways that we're able to keep in contact with them is to take them their food. So it's a very relaxed way of keeping in touch very, very regularly. How does it make you feel personally, Fiona, to have created this? It just makes me so proud that we're doing something that I know is, you know, I can say that we're actually saving lives. It's really wonderful. The countryside feels safe again for these traumatised men and women because of dogs like Irma, who's given Paul the courage to get back into the great outdoors and today they're joined by the latest addition to the family, North the Duck. The way that you have gathered up the reins of life mm. with the help of Irma is hugely inspiring. Thanks very much for that, it's a nice thing to say that. It's coffee, but hey. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> This powerful project is hoping to spread across the UK, aiming to help even more men and women in need. It's good to know that the call of duty will continue to be answered by man's best friend.